The less metabolically healthy you are, the harder it can be to fast. That's because as you fast, blood sugar starts to drop and your body increases cortisol to keep it high enough to function. Unfortunately, when insulin is high and cortisol is high, once liver glycogen runs out, the only place this energy can come from is gluconeogenesis, i.e. the creation of glucose from other materials, such as protein. As you become more metabolically healthy, fasting gets easier, but you can jumpstart this process with a little supplementation magic. Your doctor. Criminal psychologist. Is Reese crazy? Well, that's what we're gonna find out. Behold. You were supposed to leave. There's a lot of crazy talk online about gluconeogenesis. Most people who don't view the channel regularly would be surprised to learn that protein is a very rare substrate for gluconeogenesis in the human body and eating protein does not increase gluconeogenesis. In fact, the most common substrate for gluconeogenesis is glycerol, which is the backbone of all triglycerides in the body that is of fat in the body. Whenever you burn fat, a glycerol molecule is left over, which has about 5% of the potential energy of the entire triglyceride molecule. And this is enough for all of your needs as far as glucose goes in the body. So while many people yammer on about the need for energy from carbs, in reality, when your body burns pure fat, all it needs for glucose is also provided. Almost as if this is the way your body is designed to operate. It is really just the red blood cells, platelets, and a few very obscure and rare cells in the body which do not have mitochondria that must use glucose for energy. For the rest of the body, non-esterified fatty acids or NEFAs are the main fuel source and ketones largely exist solely for the use of the brain because it cannot use NEFAs, which do not penetrate the blood-brain barrier very easily. Lactate is another substrate of gluconeogenesis, and by total percentage of all gluconeogenesis, these two account for about 95%. Since you have all the substrate for gluconeogenesis you need, no matter what your diet is, why even worry? Unfortunately, when you fast a while and eat nothing, you may not be metabolically healthy enough to immediately switch to using fat for all of your energy needs. If your insulin is high, you can't go into ketosis, and that means that your brain, which can't burn other forms of fat due to the blood-brain barrier, has to have glucose. You also can't release fat from your fat cells so there's no other choice. Your body will start to scavenge material from its collagen to make glucose. Give me sugar. The reason your body sometimes strips collagen apart while fasting is to get at the glycine, which can be easily turned into glucose. Normally your body does not turn much glycine into glucose, but it can do so when it's necessary. That is, when both cortisol and insulin are high at the same time. This glycine is then stripped from the body itself and comes from one of the most unfortunate places, from your collagen. Collagen is already very sensitive to glycation from the modern diet and tends to break down over time from physical stress. But this becomes even worse during circumstances of very high cortisol and very high insulin at the same time such as when suddenly fasting after months of eating a high carb diet or when you're doing your first fast and you're really not all that healthy. But this doesn't have to happen. Lowering insulin, which fasting will do over time anyway, is the best way to go. But you can also just supplement some glycine as you fast to help stave off damage to your collagen. After all, the best way to reduce your insulin is really to fast. So if you can get through that initial fasting period, 
you're going to have your insulin problem beat as long as you don't go off the rails on your diet. So when you have this glycine already in the system, your body doesn't need to strip away the collagen in order to do gluconeogenesis. And that keeps all of this destruction from happening, even if you did have a little bit of a bad diet for a while. It's only a wafer thing. You know how I said a minute ago, glycine is freed from the worst possible place in the body? Well, some people are going to disagree with me in a moment because collagen is not the only place your body ravages to get more amino acids. It also does the same thing to your muscles if cortisol is very high. Generally, your body bounces back at the end of a fast due to growth hormone release. And while you are gonna have some of your cells die off, this is normal and it's gonna be the least healthy cells, but you just don't want things to get excessive. And due to the growth hormone and the many other hormonal changes, it ensures that you're going to create more new cells at the end of a fast than at any other time in your life. We just don't want it to go too far. Long-term data in both humans and animals show that if anything, moderate length fasts of less than four days will lead to more lean tissue, not less. Even if you do it over and over again, in a lot of these animal studies, they have them fasting back to back for their entire lives and they get nothing but benefits and they have more lean tissue. So I don't think you're gonna lose lean tissue. That's part of the message here. But if your insulin is very high, then this process is going to be much harder on your body. Once freed from your muscle tissue, alanine can be turned directly into pyruvate which is what glucose must be turned into for the body to produce ATP. This is actually a healthy source of energy too, which skips the messy first step in the electron transport chain. And while I call it the first step, in most of your energy creation, this is skipped entirely because it's very messy and dangerous, and it's really only glucose that uses this step. So this is going to be one more benefit of supplementing beta alanine, especially while you're fasting. The beta part just refers to alanine being attached to a beta carbon atom, and it doesn't impede its ability to be used in this manner. So don't get overly caught up in the technicalities. Asteroid belt up ahead, sir. No, it isn't Crichton, you thick titanium plank. Those are large broken fragments of a dying star which have compressed together under enormous pressure, causing them to compress into large fragments. You're quite right, sir. As usual. How could I have made such an elementary mistake? As usual. If you pause the material on the screen and read it carefully, then you probably notice that glutamine is also freed when muscle tissue is destroyed. And then it's turned into alpha-ketoglutarate, which is another nutrient you can and probably should supplement. I take it in the form of arginine alpha ketoglutarate or AAKG, mainly because it's cheaper. But don't worry, it absorbs just as easily as other forms because it has a weak bond and it's going to be split up as soon as you drink it anyway. There's a couple of things to note here about glutamine. First off, glutamine is very plentiful in the body, so it's really not something you need to supplement most of the time, especially since. Cancer seems to really love glutamine. Second, if you're someone who's had gout in the past, you're probably very sensitive to glutamine, meaning it can trigger a gout attack. I found this out the hard way a while back, and it appears that a genetic disposition for gout entails inability to properly process glutamine, and I found that glutamine and related supplements will instantly give me a gout attack. However, there's a solution here as well. That's just to take the alpha-ketoglutarate directly while you fast. This is needed at all times by your stem cells anyway, because that's the energy source that protects their DNA the most from damage. They generally spend their time in a low oxygen environment, away from the damaging chemicals that exist in the bloodstream, and that preserves their function, but that also means they have to rely on anaerobic energy production, and it's really alpha-ketoglutarate that your stem cells need to be healthy. One of the reasons fasting is so healthy for your stem cells is that it increases alpha-ketoglutarate production, but it is also 
very good to take it as a supplement. While fasting, it can be even more helpful, especially for people with poor metabolic health, because it is one of the nutrients that short circuits the need for catabolism during fasting, ensuring you lose only fat and not muscle. You looking for any kind of clothes in particular? Spandex! All spandex! As an experiment, I've been mixing up all the stuff in the description into a Dixie cup and taking it during my fasting days. To my surprise, I didn't have any issues at all. In the past, I've had endless problems if I just nibbled a little bit of food during a fast, or if I took supplements in capsule form, or even if I just took a cough drop, which happened to have a little sugar in it, which really set me off. But these supplements did not seem to cause any problems whatsoever. However, I would be cautious and add them in one by one. Some people could get stomach issues from some supplements on an empty stomach or get gastric issues. And you really don't need supplements during a fast for most cases. And many are just useless during a fast. For example, if you take collagen powder, I can guarantee you it's a waste of money during a fast because you simply won't be making any collagen until the fast is over. That's all there is to it. During the fast itself, the body mainly tears down, and it is after the fast that it builds back better, as it were. Except, unlike most politicians, your body actually delivers on this promise. I would avoid all supplements that come in a capsule and just stick to powders. Otherwise, you'll have to deal with fillers like rice powder that will cause insulin spikes and drive up hunger. A lot of fillers can also cause stomach irritation on an empty stomach. I also take two enteric coated baby aspirin every day, whether I fast or not. Baby aspirin increase AMPK and combine with the other supplements during a fast, it can really put the spring back into your step. So I've, I've got something here that, uh, that might help a little bit. Grayson had given me, but the mountains looked wonderful that day. Just so people can look it up more easily, because this kind of thing comes up all the time where they forget what they're supposed to take, I'm going to spell out exactly what to take to make fasting easier in this section of the video. 6 grams of glycine, 3 grams of beta alanine, 3 grams of arginine alpha ketoglutarate, plus 2 enteric coated baby aspirin. That's what I take every day while fasting now. This is what I have been experimenting with lately, though I have also just taken all the supplements in the description with no problems at all too. I don't think you need to do that though. It really is these four that are going to help the fast go easier if that's what you're interested in. And at this point I've had so much autophagy I can't imagine that I really need more. I just pour these three powders into my water and sip through the day and as an added benefit these three powders go easily into water and with the aspirin I take it before bed because that's going to protect me from having a potential heart attack in the night. While I have taken the aspirin every day even when fasting for a long time I don't always take the others. If the fasting is going well it's probably just not needed. The point here is to make things easier by giving your body what it needs. This can be important when starting off fasting or perhaps right after the holidays when you may not have had the best diet. But remember, you can always try again later and slowly work up the fast length. And this will resolve almost all fasting issues over time, whatever they might be, especially if they're digestive related. Or you can just eat a low carb meal and bounce right back into the fast. You'll often find the meal after breaking the fast early will turn out to be quite disappointing anyway. This turkey tastes half as good as it looks. I think we're all in for a very big treat. Just to make it clear, the way these supplements work is to provide the material needed for your body to make glucose without cannibalizing your own body. This will keep cortisol from going up so high, which is important for people trying to fast who already have both high cortisol and high insulin. 
So if you're one of those people who worry about cortisol, this is your solution. Chronically high insulin can take a long time to lower into normal ranges, and this can cause issues when you first start fasting or after a long layoff from fasting. Supplementing glycine, beta alanine, arginine alpha ketoglutarate, and aspirin can make fasting much easier. The exact doses are in the preceding section. I've also found that I have no problem at all taking the supplements listed in the description all together in a little Dixie cup while fasting. I don't think that's really necessary, but you can try that option if you like. It might be helpful, especially on a very long fast. I found that these supplements while fasting do make fasting easier, don't upset my stomach, and critically, they don't make it harder to fast. They don't make me hungrier. When I take supplements in capsule form, things don't go nearly so well. That's probably because they're full of fillers like rice powder, which is also full of arsenic, by the way. There are some pitfalls to fasting, especially at the beginning. Just make sure to go in with your eyes open so you don't run into any nasty surprises. Otherwise, starting fasting can feel like being hit by a Buick.